Here we have the inverse of functions, rational. These are a little bit hard because notice that there's two variables here. So when I interchange them, I'm gonna have two y's and that's gonna be a bit harder to, to solve. So it says find h inverse and the domain and range of h inverse, okay? So they want us to find the domain of in, um, h inverse, which domains are easier to find. And then it wants me to find the range of h inverse. Ranges are harder to find. So what we'll do is we'll actually just find the domain of f and then we'll automatically know what the range looks like. So right now, just with this being given, I already know what the range of h inverse is gonna be because the domain of f is all real numbers except for when that denominator equals zero because your denominator can never equal zero. So I have two x equal to five, which means I have x cannot equal five halves. So the domain of f is gonna be from negative infinity to five halves and then from five halves to positive infinity. And that's the domain of, of f or h. I shouldn't, I keep using, the letters are just letters, but the function I was given is h, so I should use h. So the domain of h is going to be the same as the range of h inverse. So we already have one piece solved and I haven't even found an inverse yet, okay? But now to find the inverse, we're gonna change this notation to y. Then we're gonna interchange the x and y's. So the y will become an x and all the x's will become y's. And so to solve for y is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Now the first thing I wanna do is multiply both sides by the common denominator so that I do not have a fraction anymore. And so if I distribute this, I get two xy minus five this will cancel and I get 5y. Then what you wanna do is you want to get all the y terms on one side. So I only have one y term here, so I'm gonna move this one over there. So that gives me negative five and then 5y minus 2xy. And then what you'll do is you'll factor that y out because both terms will have it or however many terms there are. All the terms should have it if you separated it correctly with all the y terms on one side and then the non-y terms on the other side, okay? And so if I factor that y out, I end up with this. And if I'm trying to solve for y, all I have to do is divide both sides by that factor. And then I can rewrite this as h inverse equal to negative five over five minus two x. And so then now, in order for me to find the domain, I have to figure out when does this guy not equal zero. And it just so happens that the domain of h inverse is the same, negative infinity to five halves and five halves to infinity which just happens to match the range of f inverse, which was up here, okay? It's just coincidence. It does not always come out like that. And I think I have another example to demonstrate that, okay? It just so happens that the domain and the range happen to be the same. But you do need this for your answer, and then you need both of these pieces for your answer. And make sure you're using the correct one, especially if they're different. So we do have a second example, actually I have three of them, okay? So we know that we're gonna have to find the domain of H inverse, and we're gonna have to find the range of H inverse, and we're gonna have to actually find H inverse itself, okay? So the range of H inverse is the one I can do right now. So this cannot equal zero, So seven fourths cannot equal x, which means the range is gonna be from negative infinity to seven fourths, and then seven fourths to infinity. Now to find h inverse, we're gonna change h to y, then interchange the x and y's, then multiply by the common denominator,
So we get 7x minus 4xy equal to 3y. Get all the y terms to one side. Then factor out y. And then divide by that factor to get the y all by itself. And so then we end up with h inverse being 7x over 3 plus 4x. And then in order to find the domain of h inverse, all I do is say that that denominator cannot equal x. So x cannot equal negative 3 fourths, which means the domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative 3 fourths, and then from negative 3 fourths to infinity. So for this problem, it definitely matters which one you put in which spot because they are different from one another. Okay, now for the last one. So again, I want to find the domain of H inverse, the range of H inverse, and then of course H inverse. So the range is the one I can do right away because it's the same as the domain of F. So this guy cannot equal zero, which means X cannot equal negative two thirds. So the range is negative infinity to negative two thirds and then negative two thirds to infinity. Now let's go find H inverse so that we can find the domain of H inverse. So Y equals seven X minus five, three X plus two, interchange them, multiply by the common denominator, we get 3xy plus 2x equals 7y minus 5. Get all the y terms to one side, all the x terms to the other side. Um, I'm going to actually subtract 7y from both sides. So I get 3xy minus 7y plus the 2x is still there and the negative 5 is still here. Then I'm going to minus 2x on both sides. So I get 3xy minus 7 equal to negative 2x negative 5. Oops, I forgot the 7y. Factor out the y. And then divide by that factor change that to a plus. And so then this is H inverse. So H inverse is going to be negative 2x negative 5 over 3x minus 7. Okay. And then if I want to find the domain of that function, I know that that denominator cannot equal 0, which means 3x cannot equal 7, which means x cannot equal 7 thirds. So the domain will be negative infinity to 7 thirds and then 7 thirds to infinity. And now we have all three pieces.